Hey all, this is part two, and we're going to go over some examples for if-else statements. Uh, so for undefined, um, oh cool, so we're going to talk about truthy and falsy. So hint, uh, see truthy versus falsy at the end of Boolean's operation methods section. Uh, that's one option, and you can always use the documentation in this course to try to figure out ways to solve other problems in this course, but it is also a never that bad of an idea to just do a quick Google search. Truthy versus falsy uh, in JavaScript. And you'll get better at this as you go on and as you refine your ability to search, but this is a very reasonable approximation of everything you need to know about it right there on the Google page. So let's uh, go to 175% just to make sure that everybody sees this. So in JavaScript, a truthy value is a value that translates to true when evaluated in a Boolean context. All values are truthy unless they are defined as falsy. Uh, so false, zero, empty string, null, undefined, and not a number. So there you go. Let's bring it back to 100%. And, <clears throat> excuse me. So with that in mind, uh, the way that we could make the opposite case run for this, so declared is equal to something, so this means that declared has a truthy value. And as we just saw, if we change this to an empty string, which was listed as a falsy value, will have a falsy value. If we leave it as undefined, meaning that we just declare the variable but don't actually, uh, excuse me, don't uh, assign it to anything, it is stored in something that we're going to call memory, but it doesn't have a value. So if we run this, declared is going to be evaluated to undefined, which is a falsy value. I think another one is zero. Uh, there's also not a number. Um, if you've come across not a number yet, cool. But in general, it usually means that you tried to do something like add a number to undefined. Um, so yeah, nothing really earth shattering, same idea, wrapping around an if statement. Um, here's one thing that just like a tidbit for those of you watching the entire course, you actually can't do this. So we would think that, hey, if this is not a number and I said declared is equal or equivalent to not a number, I should get um, truthy value, right? But it's a falsy value and it's just one of those where it's like, that's just the way they set it up. Uh, in general, there's always a way around these kind of things, and in this case, there's a standalone built-in function called isNan, or is not a number, and is not a number is, come on, there you go, is not a number is a function that just says, like, is this not a number? And if it is, it's going to return true. So we get a truthy value for that, um, which is dissimilar, of course, to undefined, which we saw previously. Undefined uh, is not, like, I don't know, kind of a weird version the way not a number is. So if we say declared is triple equals undefined, uh, that expression is going to evaluate to true because any value that, no, no, it's not because we made this not a number. So let's make it undefined. So undefined you can compare using triple equals, which of course is dissimilar to not a number. And I actually don't remember if null works this way. So uh, first thing that we'll do is just compare null because it's a falsy value. We're going to get declared as a falsy value. And if we set this equal to null, I'm not sure, but this might be a falsy value. I don't remember. Truthy. Okay, cool. So you can compare null across like that. Excellent. So let's talk about an if else statement with some numbers. We've got two variables here. One is going to be the total number of dogs. Another is going to be the total number of cats. And for some reason, we have some dog to cat ratio that somebody's going for. And we need to make sure that there are less than eight dogs and, sorry, that dogs are greater than or equal. Oh, boy, here we go. The number of dogs is greater than 8, and the number of cats is less than 9. So if that's the case, which greater than 8, less than 9, which are very confusing numbers to have, so we'll change this to, there we go. So in this case, we're going to see that the number of cats and dogs is acceptable, because this expression evaluates to true. If we were to change this such that the number of dogs is not greater than 8, and or the number of cats is not uh, less than 9, then we're going to see the else portion run. So there you go. Let's talk about an if-else statement with strings, and we've got our password condition again. And so in this case, rather than just saying the password is good, we're going to say the password is long enough, or the password, uh, please enter a password of at least 9 characters. So you can almost picture this being like a sign-in response, like, hey, here's my password. We might be saying something like, hey, the password is good, or the password is not long enough. So the password length needs to be greater than 8. In this case, it is. And if we were to change it to a password which is not greater than 8, we're going to get the response, please enter password of at least 9 characters. So same idea. Nothing really changing as we go through each one of these. This is the syntax for an if-else statement. And 
that's kind of how they work. If the expression of value is to true, we get this part. If the value is to false, we get this part. And of course, false or falsy value. Let's talk about our ingredient list, and we're going to demonstrate that index of trick again. It's not a trick, it's more of like a pattern. Uh, so if we have an ingredient that we are looking for that is inside of the list, we're going to get the ingredient in question is on the list, sugar is on the list. And then we'll say, um, oh, I don't know, bone marrow. I saw that on the menu last night, and it, it was intriguing. I didn't get it. But that's because bone marrow just didn't seem like the kind of thing I wanted to add to the things I eat. But you never know, it may be really healthy for you, so we might want to go back and check it out. But anyway, this one's kind of ridiculous because obviously bone marrow is not going to be part of the flour, sugar, and egg situation. But let's say something like mm, baking soda, because sometimes that's part of that recipe. But in this case, it's not. So we're going to get baking soda is not on the list. And the reason would be because this expression here is the in in index of the ingredient in question when looking in the ingredient list. Does the result of that uh, yield a number that's greater than negative one. So we discussed this, and the idea is that if it's negative one, we know that the ingredient is not present on the list. If it's greater than negative one, it means it is a valid index within the array, and so therefore is in the list. And finally, we're going to go through an example with an object. And you might be thinking, like, hey, aren't these extremely repetitive? And you're right, they are. Um, and the reason is, is because well, we're just going over what an if-else statement is, but we've also talked about arrays, objects, booleans, strings, and numbers so far, so it's a decent idea to keep threading into the new material, old information that we've gone over, just so you start to kind of um, build a habit around the previous things that we've gone over. And if you haven't, then they're always there to go back and check out the documentation. Uh, so, fruit totals, bananas, and strawberries. And so if the fruit totals dot bananas is greater than three, so if we have more than three bananas, and we have more than 10 strawberries, then we have enough for our you know, fruit salad or recipe. Um, so if we run this, and this is going to evaluate to true, because we have more than 10 and more than 3, we have enough fruit with 4 bananas and 12 strawberries. And we're also just demonstrating a quick interpolation of the value in the object into the resulting string, which is nice. And then here, we're going to change one of these. And the idea is that this is an AND statement. So if it's an AND statement, they both need to be true in order for the entire expression to evaluate to true. And we're going to demonstrate what I mean by that with another quick one. We do not have enough of both fruits. However, if this was an OR situation, we're going to see that we have enough fruit. Because if one of those expressions, fruit, dot, or fruit totals dot bananas or fruit totals dot strawberries, if either one of these expressions evaluates to true, then the entire OR statement evaluates to true and we'll get this section of the code log to the console. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to say that we're in good shape yet because we haven't really done anything that would yield a sort of shape that we could describe as either good, medium, or bad. But in this case, we've completed what we need to in terms of going over the, quote, living documentation. And by living, you're kind of half of that life. So walking through, changing the values, getting a good understanding of how the if statements work in these various scenarios is a key step in understanding, you know, the way the code works, but also helping you um, develop useful patterns for appreciating how code works in small situations like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.